we almost did not finish our tour here at Winchester House. We have our own real eerie scary experience. You just have to see this. Hi everyone, welcome to a new vlog. This is the second video for my San Francisco travel series. And today we are going to visit the Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. It's about an hour away from San Francisco. So here we go. I'm with my mom, my cousin Osil, and her daughter Janine, who is our driver. Thanks Janine for bringing us around and for being our good and safe driver. Okay, we just arrived at the parking lot of the Winchester Mystery House and this tree is already eerie. It matches the vibe of the house. We just parked our car. We are lucky there are a lot of parking spaces available, but they have extra parking spaces across the street. On-site parking is free, but security is not. Been a lot of reports that things were stolen from their cars, so just be careful and keep note of that. So here we are, we're going in. This is the entrance part of the Winchester House. The Winchester Mystery House was once the personal residence of Sarah Winchester, the widow of firearms magnet William Wirt Winchester. The mansion is renowned for its size, its architectural curiosities, and its lack of any master building plan. It is designated as California's historical landmark and is listed on the National Register of Historic Places. It is privately owned and serves as a tourist attraction. The Winchester Mystery House is considered one of the top 10 haunted places to visit in America. Oh my. We're getting our tickets now. The tickets are a little expensive. For adults, 41, senior, 38, and children, $19. We just got our tickets. Thank you, Osil, for buying our tickets. So generous. Here we go. We're going in. This is the entrance here. Since its construction in 1886, the property and mansion were claimed by many to be haunted by the ghost of those killed with the Winchester rifles. As legends pass down through the years, there are a lot of haunting stories floating around that has been happening and continue to happen on this Winchester Mystery House. And I can tell you, we have our own story to tell. I'll share it later. Okay, we're physically going into the Winchester House and the first stop is the Winchester House gift shop. Very convenient location for every visitor. So you will check it out first and you'll not forget and see if you like some of these souvenirs and items. I have to say it's a really nice gift shop. Very sophisticated, nice decors, very nice setup. A lot of great gift ideas. As you come out from the gift shop, this is the area that will welcome you. Nice plants and trees. I'm sure during the spring and summer it will look nice with all the flowers and the trees blooming. There's a lot of sitting areas waiting areas maybe if the crowd or more crowd them to wait we're lining up now to get ready to get inside the mansion i love mansions i've visited a lot of mansions and i even posted a video of one of the mansions in connecticut i am excited to get in but i have this weird feeling it's an eerie feeling <laughs> i don't know why when Sarah's husband, William Winchester, died in 1881, she became one of the wealthiest women in the world. Unfortunately for Sarah, the fortune came with a dark side. She became convinced that she was cursed. 
Sarah was certain that relocating was the only way to evade the spirits that plagued her. In 1886, she left her home in New Haven, Connecticut for a new life in San Jose, California. There she bought a simple eight room, this farmhouse, that she would go on to transform into a marvelous 160 room mansion now known as the Winchester Mystery House. We're going into the mansion now, and this is where our tour starts. First stop of the tour are these amazing stained glass windows with great artistry. The mansion has more than 10,000 windows. Pretty amazing, isn't it? All the stairs at the mansion is in a series of 13 steps. They're short risers due to Sarah's bad arthritis. She couldn't lift her feet high. So in order for her to move around, you have these risers. One of the strangest thing in the mansion are the doors and stairs led to nowhere, some of them. Doors may open onto the walls or in the case of a second story door to the outside, resulting in a big fall for anyone who might try to exit that way. A closet door in the second floor opens into a first floor sink several feet below. The stairs to nowhere are pretty much what they sound like. Stairs go up until they reach the ceiling and then they just stop. Some people think that these touches were designed to confuse the evil spirits that were haunting Mrs. Winchester, believing that ghosts could get lost on stairs that went nowhere or accidentally step out of a door that went outside. Mrs. Winchester might have deliberately installed these weird touches. If this sounds strange to you today, you're not alone. Sarah Winchester also had an obsession with the number 13. Many things installed in the home feature 13 of something, 13 window panes, 13 wall panels, 13 sections of flooring, 13 stairs in each staircase. There are 13 bathroom sinks, have 13 drain holes, and the room, the rooms has 13 coat hooks. She even employed 13 workers at a time. Sarah spent $5.5 million on her 24,000 square foot home, which has 160 bedrooms, 40 staircases, 13 bathrooms, and 47 fireplaces. There are more than 10,000 windows and 2,000 doors. Next stop is the South Conservatory, which is the room with the most windows and more light, beautiful area. In its heyday, the home stood seven stories tall. Today, after the 1906 earthquake, badly damaged, it's just four levels. This is the ballroom, and it's the biggest room in the house with the highest ceiling, reaching 12 feet. A fireplace mantle takes up most of one wall, while wood paneling covers most of the other walls. This is one of the elegant bedrooms in the mansion. Now this is the most eerie part, our own scary experience of this haunted house. My cousin also suddenly felt like someone was pulling her right leg and she saw like a, a man in one of the, the rooms and she was like not herself talking incoherently we had to call the staff and try to get her off the the house and bring her outside as soon as she was outside she felt better it was a scary thing there's no question that place is haunted there's been recent stories from regular folks with the same experiences and I think for someone going to visit the mansion just be alert 
and know that it can happen to anyone. You certainly visit the mansion at your own risk, but also with an open mind. If you're not a ghost hunter like me, I love visiting mansions. I love mansions, especially to visit historical landmarks and register of historic places. So, so I didn't mind the scary stories and I truly enjoyed my visit here. That was the end of our tour. And there's also a garden tour if you like. I think it would be better during spring and summer to do that. You exit the mansion, we're passing by the gift shop again. So we stopped by and we bought some souvenirs and gift items. Thanks again Osil and Janine for bringing us there. We had a great time. Thanks for watching. Watch out for the other San Francisco travel series. Be kind, be loving, and be inspired. Take care everybody. Bye-bye.